The purpose of this video will be to show you how to create your own compass and pace practice courses. These courses aren't going to be exact. I'm really not using much in the way of GPS or GIS at all here. We're really just using uh, Google Maps to give us an idea of how big an area is. And then we're going to use a spreadsheet that's available for you on sylvanstimbersports.com. And I'll post the link in the comments below, uh, the video description below. We're going to use this spreadsheet, and all the spreadsheet does is use pretty basic trigonometry uh, to figure out what this course is going to look like. So if you want to practice a compass and pace course, you can't create your own uh, with this tool because then you'll kind of know the answer at the end where you're supposed to end up. So you need to get a friend uh, or one of your professors or somebody to download this spreadsheet, find an area that you have legal access to that's relatively flat. This isn't going to work very well if there's a lot of topography. So you need a relatively flat area. And of course, you want to try to avoid sending people across fence lines, onto private property, across roads, across large streams or rivers. So you, you need to know the area a little bit to set this up. So uh, you see on the right here, I've zoomed in to a park that's just south of our campus at Stephen F. Austin State University. This is Pecan Park. It's an old pecan orchard. And I know this area that has all these old pecan trees on it and is, you know, free of major obstructions. There's no fence lines, uh, nothing major there. So I want to get a sense for how big this area I'm working with is. And so I'm going to right click on Google Map, click Measure Distance. And so I can see this is kind of an almost square area. It's uh, 400 feet wide, just a little over, and it looks like I'm at about 480 feet long. And so you need to pick a start point, and the start point is relatively arbitrary, uh, but I'm gonna pick you know, where I put this dot right here, because I know that's gonna be on the northwest uh, corner of all the pecan trees. I also know it's right on this corner of the parking lot, so I can give a student directions there very easily. So now I know I want to keep them from going more than 400 feet east of this point. I don't want them to go west of this point at any point, And I want to keep them from going more than 480 feet south of this point. So what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start using the spreadsheet over here that I downloaded from sylvanstimbersports.com. So this is the same spreadsheet you've downloaded. By rule at Conclave, each course is going to consist of about four traverses, although that will vary, but it's supposed to be between 30 and 50 chains long. So I've set this up where if you type things in the yellow boxes uh, for distance and azimuth, it'll convert things to bearing for you automatically and it will convert chains into feet for you automatically. And you can just tinker around with this and see how you're doing. Okay, so I know I'm starting at the northwest corner, so let me start, let me see if I can send them seven chains and you can adjust these as you go if something doesn't work. I'm going to send them seven chains, and it's telling me do north right now, which I don't want to do. You can see over here that would send them across Star Avenue, a busy road, so I don't want to do that. Let me send them kind of southeast. So I'll type in 135 degrees, which is due southeast. Okay, and now I can see I've got this graph down here showing me that they started here at 0, 0, and now this is where they end up if they correctly do that traverse. And I can see they've only gone about 350 feet east and south. And so if I look over here at Google, I know they're going to end up, let me adjust this to 350 feet. Well, no, the whole traverse length, sorry, it's up here. It's 462 feet. So if I adjust this to 462 feet, and I'm just eyeballing the angle here, this isn't very precise, but that's going to put them about there. The only reason I'm doing this over here is to make sure I'm not sending them. We've got a big creek over here. I don't want to send them across. So I know, okay, I'm not sending them across that big creek. So now I look at this and I can bounce them to the west. I can bounce them to the north. I've got some room there. So let's see what happens if we go maybe four chains. And let's go a little bit west of north. I'll, I'll give them 350 degrees. Okay, I can still see based on this graph that I'm doing good. That sent them 264 more feet. So the total down here is 726 feet. And so if I add that in here... That's going to have them about here. This is a picnic pavilion, so it would be okay if they had to avoid it or something. That's not a big deal. So I've got them up here. And I can see my total course is 11 chains long. Let me see if I can give them something a little longer. What if I put in now maybe eight chains? And I can see if I send them kind of southwest down into this area, you know, that looks like it'll be clear. So southwest is going to be, let's go approximately 220 degrees, see how that works. 
Okay, that's got them, I can see, that's got them about 50 points west of my start point up here. But I know if they got into these woods, it's not the end of the world. They're a little thick, but it's not a big deal. Uh, my total course length is now 1,254 feet. And so that's going to have them um, 1,254 somewhere in here. Now, the shape of this graph over here and the shape of your lines over here on Google Maps are not going to be precise because you can see that my axes on this graph are scaling differently. The, you know, you're not scaling this map at all. It's staying the same. But as I put in these traverses, the axes are expanding or shrinking to fit all the course. Um, so if this doesn't look exactly like this, it, it rarely does. That's not a problem. Um, so, okay, so we're out here now, so I can see I definitely need to send them kind of to the north and to the east, but maybe I can just send them due east for a ways first. And I'm trying to vary up my lengths here, my distances. That way, you know, if you have a student doing this, they get practice converting different distances from chains to feet or whatever. Okay, so I'm going five. Let's send them due east and see how that does. So I can see that that's going to be fine. I'm still going to be in bounds. Down here, I need to go out to 1584 feet total. And so now I know I've got them. They're right about here, give or take. Um, and I've gone 24 chains, so if I can work in 16 more chains, that'll get us sort of back to conclave average. I'm going to send them back up northeast, and I know if they get into this open field, that's okay. They just built a new bathroom in here, but that's a small building. They can avoid it if they need to. I've got another video up on that you can check out on this page. Okay, so let's, let's send in a long one. Let's send them nine chains, and I want it east of north, so I'm going to go, we'll call it 30 degrees, see where that puts them. Okay, so here I'm going over 600 feet now, so I know they're going to end up somewhere up in here. That may be a little further than I want. Um, let me try dropping that back to 20 degrees. Now they're going 100 feet north of my start point, which was right here. So I may be starting to get up into the road, but I think I'm going to be okay there. Um, so if I do that, our total length is now out to 2178 feet. And so let me go up here, 2178, and realistically, you know, it shows them crossing over this point right here on this figure, so this is all rough. This may not be too precise. I'm, I'm going to put it right here. It doesn't look exactly the same, but that gives you a rough area of where they're going to be. Now, I don't want them walking right through this parking lot, so I'm not going to try and send them straight back to the start point. Um, let me see if I can send them... You know, another seven chains will get me up to 40, which is sort of the midpoint. And I want to send them kind of south of west, so let's go to... That's pretty far south of west, 200. Let's see what that does. Oh, that just reversed my previous azimuth. That's exactly 180 off. So I don't want to do that. Let me bump that up to 235, see what that does for us. Yeah, yeah, that kind of works. Um, and so if I do that now, my total course length is 2680. And so it's showing them back in somewhere around here. And there's a playground in here, but that's fine if they end up on a playground. Um, so I've kind of made a course now, and here's what the spreadsheet does for you that's real handy. So a person goes out and they run this compass and pace course. How do you know how good they are? How do you know if they're right? This area right here is exactly what you want. So the professor or the, the friend goes out with them, another student, they've made the course, they know the answer. You can just hit print and print this page out or take a screenshot of it or take a picture with your phone, whatever. This is what you really need right here to judge the course. So now I'll send out the person doing the compass and pace course. They'll do the whole course. They'll put a pin flag at the end. Hopefully they end up right near here. We'll pin flag the start point. And then we'll go to the start point. We'll shoot 151.6 degrees. Realistically, you know, 150 degrees is about the best you're going to get with most compasses we're using, right? And then I've brought a fiberglass tape with me or something like that. Um, and I, I tape, you know, we, we measure out 202.3 feet. And we pin flag that. That's the true end point. And then we measure the distance between where they ended up and where we think the true end point was. So this spreadsheet is just doing all the trigonometry so that instead of, you know, running the whole course, it's just saying, okay, based on all these angles and all these distances, here's the answer. This is how far you should have ended up from the start at a given angle. So when you're using this spreadsheet and you're making a course, you probably don't want them to end up like 900 feet away from the start because then you might have difficulty measuring that accurately, right? So you probably want to end them up within several hundred feet of the start so it's easy to measure that out. 
Okay, so I've got my course, I'm happy with it, I've got my answer, I can hit print on this, screenshot it, whatever. Um, one last step you need to do is you need to convert this into something that a competitor can then use. Um, and so I'm gonna copy this over here to a new tab, and I'm gonna paste values here. And I'm gonna, you know, go ahead and make this nice and bold, throw a line above it and below it, just some basic table formatting. And then I'm gonna throw a line below it here. Uh, you may want to insert a title above it somewhere, something like that, so you know what it is. And part of compass and pace, you never know if you're going to get an azimuth or a bearing. You never know if they're going to give you the distance in chains or feet or whatever. So it's good to practice using a little bit of everything. And so I'll go through and I'll delete random ones. So here's east of south, south 45 east. And so I'll keep one of those. I'll keep one of these north of west, south of west. There's a cardinal direction. I'll delete that one. Let them go 90, um, and north of east, you know, I'll let them keep that. We've already done a south of west up here, so I'll delete that and give them that. So now they have a couple azimuths. They have four bearings, kind of every combination of bearing they can try out, so they get a little bit of practice with that math. And then similarly, I can see I have seven I've used twice here, so I'll delete one of those and one of the other ones, and then the rest of this is just pretty much, you know, arbitrary. Give them a little bit of everything. And so now they know here are my six legs in order. I've been given distances for some of them in feet, some in bearings, some in azimuth. So the first step this person can take is sit down with their clipboard and calculator. Use your phone. It's a practice course, right? And just convert this to whatever you want. And they may not even want the distance in chains or feet. They may want to go ahead and if they know one chain, their pace is 14 steps. They may want to, you know, take all this and convert it into their paces. So then they can just count paces and they've got that written down on their little sheet of paper and they can use that to help them when they do the compass and pace course. So, so then I can print this out, screenshot it, whatever, give it to the person that's going to do this practice course. And then I can be out there with them and I can check their answer because I've got all this stuff from this tab. So, so that's a really simple, straightforward way to put together a compass and pace practice course. Once you've done this a few times, you can do this in five minutes for any given area. In 10 minutes, you can probably make three or four courses, go out there with a group with your forestry club, practice a few different courses, see how you did, get immediate feedback, figure out problems, figure out things people are doing wrong. And this can get you pretty good at compass and pace pretty quickly um, if you've got just a little bit of experience with it already. So again, I'll post the link below to sylvanstimbersports.com where you can access this spreadsheet, download it, and use it on your own. Hope that's helpful.